something glided out of the darkness, and when she saw what it was, a dry shriek escaped her lips. A human would have no chance against this being. Hazy red light flickered flame-like in the vacant orbs of a bleached white skull. The gaze was trained unfillingly on the girls, as if they were live prey. Skinless, fleshless hands, both sublime and terrible, clutched a staff so gorgeous it seemed to be the concentration of all the world's beauty. It was as if death had donned an intricately ornamented raven black robe and been born into this world from another along with the darkness. The air instantly froze. At the entrance of the Absolute, even time seemed to stop. As though her soul had been taken, the girl forgot to breathe. With no sense of time, inhaling was difficult, and she nauseously gulped for air. A messenger from beyond has come to lure us away. But that didn't seem right. The night behind them had frozen as well. <sighs> she heard an exhalation that could not even be called a scream. But whether it had been her, her trembling little sister, or the knight with a sword before them, she didn't know. Death's fingers, of which only the bones picked clean were left, stretched out slowly and then violently snatched at, not the girls, but the knight. She wanted to look away, but she was too scared. She had the feeling that if she looked away, the monster would transform into something even more horrible. Grasp heart. Death incarnate made a clinching motion, and metal clung noisily next to the girl. She was scared to take her eyes off death, but she lost to the tiny bit of curiosity still dwelling inside her and looked at the knight lying face down on the ground. He wasn't moving. He was dead. Yes, dead. <laughs>